Now let's talk about collaboration. Last year at FFDC, we launched branching, which is huge for collaboration. It means that you as a developer can work in isolation. You can build out new features without worrying about affecting what the rest of your team is working on. And today we're excited to announce a new feature related to branching, the ability to create commits. And for those who don't know what a commit is, it's kind of similar to versions in Flutterflow. You're able to give a name to the changes that you've made, only we're trying to give you an enhanced user experience here. Now you can see the changes tied to a specific branch. You can search through your branch's history for the commit you're looking for. You can view a single commit and see the exact changes that were made in that commit. And you can even restore your branch to the state it was at a certain commit. So we're really excited about commits, and we think it's going to be a big improvement to branching. <laughs> but we're all about full transparency here, and we know that branching really isn't where it needs to be in terms of the overall user experience with Flutterflow. I've talked to a lot of users, and people have raised concerns about a sometimes confusing user experience or even inaccurate merges in some cases. So I just want to reassure you that we've been doing a lot of experimentation and thinking, and we're trying out a new angle. So we're trying to leverage the trusted Git framework, which of course is industry standard when it comes to version control. So in these experiments, what we're trying to do is give you the power to look at the changes in more of a text-based environment. So instead of looking at these visual changes, you'll look at a YAML file, which is like a simplified text file of all the different parts of your Flutterflow project. So let's say I made a change. I took my padding constant and I changed it from six to eight. I might see something like the above where I see things that were removed in red and things that were added in green. So we think that this will lead to more transparency and visibility and more uh, accuracy in terms of what to expect when you're merging. And I know that we have some people who are not used to writing code or using Git, so I just want to let you know we'll make sure that this is a great user experience no matter your background. So, yeah. mm -hmm. great. so that was collaboration within a single project. But what if we want to share resources across multiple projects? For example, um, you know, a big team that wants to share a design system or component library across all of their different applications. So currently, uh, we're restricted to team design libraries, which we do have now. Uh, but often, components or you know, parts of UI are tied to data types, enums, or even custom functions or API calls. Which is why, today, we're excited to announce the support for libraries. So with libraries, you can create components, data types, API endpoints, actions, all of the above, and publish them as a library that you can reuse in any of your projects. This allows you to share resources across all of your different applications uh, with no restrictions and with version control. So I'd like to invite Anusha to give a demo. So uh, here I have Radix Design System, which is a Flutterflow project, which of course has a lot of components. But if you can observe, these components also have component parameters, which are of custom data type and enums. So let me make a quick change to this project. I will edit the description here and say this is a demo. And then I will commit my changes to the main branch. Say new description. OK. So now that we've made a commit, we are all set to publish this project as a library. So let me go down to the publishing page. And here we have built out a new page, which is to publish this project as a library. Here you can set the version of your project and enter a description for this. Uh, I will say added a new description. And you can view all the previously published versions here as well. So I'll just go ahead and click Publish. And there we go. We've published this project as a library. And we are all set to use this as a part of other Flutterflow projects. So 
Here I have another Flutterflow project, which is a dashboard page that I've built out to control user permissions. Uh, and I would like to use radio buttons, which are not uh, directly offered by Flutterflow, instead a more customized version of that. So uh, instead of building it from scratch, again, we can leverage what we've already built as a part of Radix design system. And we could do that by simply importing the project into this one. So I will go ahead to the project dependencies page and click on add dependency. Uh, it shows up all the projects that you have access to and have been published as a library. In addition to this, you can also copy paste the project ID. So let me just click on Radix Design System, and these are all the resource types you have access to. So if you can observe here, it has imported the latest version of this project, and whenever there's an upgrade available, uh, you will have a notification, and you can either choose to upgrade it to a newer version or continue the existing version itself. So going back to the widget tree, I will uh, add my radio group component here. I will scroll through these components, and you can see that the description is updated to what I just said. And then I'll go ahead and the radio group um, component. And here's the interesting part. So this component requires certain parameters, which are of custom enum type. But I don't have to worry about it, because I have access to all of these resources from the library. So I can go ahead and select the options that I want. Yeah. So we are all set. And maybe just click this one. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, I would just like to make one quick change. And that is to add a snack bar option here so that we can uh, get to know what was the radio button that was clicked. So I will add show snack bar. And I would like you to notice that we can get access to the component state which we just added. And that can be used as well. So that's it for the library's demo. And passing it over to Leah. Awesome. I'm just looking for the clicker. Be right back. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, awesome. I'm really excited about libraries. And I noticed some Flutter developers in the audience. So one thing to mention is that when you export the code, the library is actually included as a local Dart package that then is imported into your app. So super neat feature with a lot of flexibility. And if you're already using design systems or team libraries like Alex mentioned before, don't worry, because we're going to be migrating those to library projects over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Now, besides libraries offering lots of flexibility with sharing resources across your team or projects, I'm really excited about libraries because I think they're the very first step in building a true integration framework for Flutterflow. <laughs> yeah. So when I talk to customers, a lot of people have requests to improve an existing integration that we have or offer some new integration with some SaaS tool that they're using. And this is great. We would love to build all those integrations. But really, we don't want to be the gatekeepers here. Our vision is that the entire ecosystem can build their own native integrations for Flutterflow. So our hope is that customers, partners, third-party providers can all come in, create an integration, and share it with all of you. And as a proof point here, I'd like to welcome David from Adapti, because they were able to take what we already have with libraries and build an Adapti Flutterflow integration that will soon be available for you all to use. So over to you, David. Okay. Uh, can we get to the slides? So, so what is Adapti? Adapti helps you build and scale your in-app subscriptions. Over 7,000 apps use Adapti. We track over 1 billion in subscription revenue annually. Our SDK is um, 
used for the most popular UI frameworks, including Flutter. Over the past few weeks, we've been working on the Flutter Flow library that makes the features of Adapti available for Flutter Flow customers to use in their apps. We built this library by wrapping our Flutter SDK. So let's go to the computer and see a quick example of how this works. In this simple application UI, we have one button. It's triggering the action flow. In the action flow, we fetch the paywall data from Adapti using custom action get paywall. You can see it's being imported from the Adapti Flutter Flow plugin. Check to see if it's loaded successfully. If the data was successfully loaded, we navigate to the paywall page and pass in the fetch paywall data as an argument. Next. Let's configure the UI to display our products. In our case, the paywall contains only one product, but it could contain more. To display the price, you can use product price localized string field. Okay, there we go. You can display additional parameters such as offers, offer details, or any other information using an appropriate field of our products. Last but not least, making a purchase. Let's review uh, this action flow. First, we're using make a purchase action, then we're checking the results. If there's no errors, the users get access level, we just navigate back. And what that means is that the paywall will close and the home page will be shown. And put it all together, we can see what it looks like. Let's go to the slides. Um, okay, here we go. We're super excited about the future of Flutter Flow integration framework. Um, we'll be sharing more details of the Adapti library once Flutter Flow 5.0 is launched next week. But in the meantime, you can check out our current docs and we have in our special offer. Thank you. Awesome. Like I said, I'm so excited about the library's feature. I think it's gonna be huge for the entire Flutterflow community. And like we were saying, we still have some work to do to really make this a full-fledged integration framework. So we'll be gradually adding more hooks and making this, this feature more robust. Since we're talking about integrations, I did just want to take a quick moment to recognize that I know you all have been asking for updates to some of our integrations. So rest assured, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be making improvements to the Supabase integration so we can support all of Supabase's latest features. Yeah. <laughs> and libraries are only good if people can find them and discover them. Thankfully, we already have a place that allows you to see what other people are building and use it in your own project. So libraries will be coming to the Flutterflow marketplace very soon. Woo!